Hello and welcome everyone, Tyrell here, and I'm starting a new series. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through Town Hall 10, Town Hall 9, and Town Hall 8 and below. 8 and below will all be clumped together in one video for both trophy and farming bases, and I'm going to be showing you how I design bases for them. Now, this should work for everyone. This is the first part of the series. This is going to be Town Hall 10 Trophy. And at the end of this video, we will not have a finished base. What we'll have is a base that's worth testing. A base that is worth trying out. And once I try it out, I'll figure out where the weak points are and shuffle it around, try and change it up, and see if I can make it work. So we're not going to have an actual base. And I've actually tried three bases before this. I've come up with them trying to make this video. And I've decided they weren't good enough. So this is the next try. There's several tries before this. And even in the end, we won't have a final base design. We'll just have something worth testing. So let's go ahead and get started with the base design. Now, first off, you're obviously going to be putting the clan castle towards the center. It doesn't matter. Left or right, uh, top, bottom, doesn't matter. And it doesn't necessarily have to be directly in the center where I have it placed. It's just got to be right around there. If you're going to be designing a trophy base or a war base, you're going to want it in the center. It's your most powerful defense, and it needs to be there where it's useful. It doesn't mean it has to be unlurable, but it should be hard to lure at the very least. Now, it goes without saying that the town hall's got to go right near it. I like to put them like this, just directly across that center point. But you know what? I think I'm actually going to have them split up just a little bit. Going to have them split by a wall. You can do this. Have them in separate compartments, but you want them close together. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to think, what do I want? I want to put my Inferno Towers down first, but that's a bad placement. Never place your Inferno Towers like this. One free spell can freeze both these Inferno Towers if it's placed directly in the center. Now you can place them across like this, like right over there, that's fine. But you don't want to place them across from each other like this, because they can be frozen together like this as well. So those are the two configurations you don't want. Now, that will work if you place them like that, but I'm actually going to put them down here on the bottom, spread them out from the town hall just a little bit so they can't be both frozen at the same time. I'm 100% certain they cannot both be frozen. Now, I am not going to be putting my expos in the center. I'm doing that to make a point. I'm making the point that the expos aren't necessarily the best defenses anymore. They do 80 DPS, they do retarget very fast, and do have a lot of health, but once you get to them with a P.E.K.K.A., you're going to get like two hits on it and then it's dead. So really what you want to do is you want to use them to slow people down a little bit farther outside and actually use something like your Tesla or your Archer Towers as your actual defenses. I'm going to close off my core. What you want to start with is the core. That's what I'm starting with here. Now Wizard Towers are great at taking out wall breakers. They're very, very good, especially when supplemented by those multi-target Inferno Towers. Depending on the settings, I really don't set my Inferno Towers to single target because once they're frozen, they become entirely useless because that ruins their whole buildup. Now, I'm going to make it anti-air. Normally, an air defense is a tertiary defense. It's one that goes in the second layer out. But if you really want to defend against air, which I think I'm going to with this base, you can put an air defense or even two air defenses, maybe where the Wizard Towers were, in your center, in your core. You can do that as well. Now, I'm going to put moats here. The moats are these little gaps, but one thing I have to say about the moats, one little caveat, one little thing to worry about, those moats right there take up almost as many walls as a full compartment with buildings in it take. They take up almost as much space, almost as much walls. They take up less space, but almost as much walls, and there's nothing inside of them. Pretty much add four more walls and you've got a full compartment. So they use up a lot of walls really fast. Now I'm going to spread these in a gap a little bit. I'm going to do what I call pathing. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and lure their troops over to the side. So I'm going to put those skeleton traps there. So if they come directly from the top, their troops are going to be split going to the side. And they're going to go towards the expo. The golems and giants are already going to go for the expo anyways. Everything, goes, everything else is going to be drawn in by the heroes and the skeleton traps. Now Tesla are very strong, so they're going right in the core. They have a DPS of 99. And going right above the core, also allowing me for a good split. Allowing a good split for my base right there just so my walls don't overlap. They don't sit right next to each other so two wall breakers or whatever can open all of them. For my walls, it would take three wall breakers. 
Now, I know that I have an odd number of giant bombs, so I'm going to place one there. I'm not necessarily going to keep it there, but that's a good place to put one if I don't come up with a better one. Now, I got to think about what I want to do. Do I want to bring the walls out from here? Let's go ahead and try it from there. Put that third expo right there. Again, I'm putting it more towards the outside. I'm going to use it to shield me more than I'm going to use it as a defense. But I'm going to put it up so I can defend against the air. Gonna place some wizard towers down right there because the wizard towers are actually really good at taking out wall breakers, like I said before. And that point, that bottom point, is where the people are gonna be placing their wall breakers if they attack from that side. So I want my wizard towers there to hit them. That might not necessarily be the best place. Maybe I wanna switch them with these archer towers so they can shoot over the walls at the wall breakers. And it looks like this wall placement won't work. I'm actually gonna drag it out a little bit more so I can place one more building in there. So now I just have to bring this out. I'm going to make it too deep because I know I don't have enough walls to make two compartments there, two layers of compartments. So I'm just going to make one longer compartment. It should work all right. I mean, it is a quick trip from there to the core. This is going to be a weak spot, I believe. So I'm going to have to supply something outside to help reinforce it. Get a cannon out there, get some high defense buildings here. And I know I'm going to be mirroring on the other side, so I may as well put those in there just for symmetry. I'm going to put them there anyways, and they did recently get a health boost. And at this point, I just want to mirror it on the other side. And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, do I really want this? Do I really want this design? Do I really want the way it's designed right now? I don't really have much stopping wall breakers down on the bottom, especially not in the center, stopping a jump. So that's going to be difficult. That's going to be a sticking point. I may need traps or high health buildings. Now the mortar's outside because I have no space inside the walls, and I want the mortars there because my clan castle is most likely going to be lureable, so I want to screw over lures as easily as I possibly can. The best way to do that, best way to do that is to take a mortar and put it towards the outside. Now I'm just using that right there as a reference so I know how far out I want my walls to go. A little too far there, right there. I want it too deep, so I'm going to just use those as a reference then move them around. Do I want it right up here? Now I can bring golems in there with that, but then my golems, the golems I mean, their golems, not my golems, may bounce around too much. They'll go from the archer tower to the tesla and then to the expo. It's not exactly how I want them to do that. Maybe for symmetry, put the dark elixir storage there, just because it sits in the center and it has a lot of health. You gotta think about the health of the buildings while you're placing everything down. Do you want that there? Do you want your high health buildings on which side? Whichever side has the least defenses should get the most high health buildings. I don't want that there because I just remembered I'm placing my air defenses like that. My air defenses are going instead of, you know, one top left, one top right, one bottom left, one bottom right like most of my designs do. I'm placing one top, bottom, left, right. So I need one on the top. Now I also have a mortar to put out. I'm gonna wait for a second and get this compartment done. Gotta get this compartment done, move that cannon out, check the range, that's good. I'm gonna move the archer towers out, because I don't like how I had it there. I'm gonna move that out, put a high health building there, that high health building is gonna help me really well. It's gonna help me keep out all the troops. It's gonna stick them up right around those giant bombs, three giant bombs right at the top. They come directly from the top, they're hitting Teslas and traps and all that good stuff. And they're getting pulled off to the sides, hopefully. That's what the hope is. Okay, let's see. Is this the right spacing? Yes, it is the right spacing. Because I don't want any gaps, because I'm not going to be placing any traps inside there. I'm going to have my traps outside my walls. Now this base, remember, is going to be just a preliminary design. The final thing could only keep a couple of the things. It could only keep a couple of the compartments. Alright, let's see. I can't mirror that on that side. I don't have enough walls. Oh, what to do, what to do. I don't want to scrap this design. But I... I'm one wall short. Where can I get a wall? I'm not sure, because you gotta remember, you only have 250 walls. It doesn't look like I've used 250 walls, but I really have. And most of them has gone into those moats right there. Those moats are what are taking up all my walls. They're taking up almost a compartment worth of walls each. But I don't want to get rid of them. They're really helping up top because that's just ruining it for wall breakers. If people come with jumps, obviously moats do nothing, but there's a lot of people that don't carry jumps, and if they don't carry jumps, the moats will just be the death of them, especially if you've got like Tesla and wizard towers and all that stuff near it. But I have an idea. If I take that, 
If I take those out from there, those actually become better funnels. I don't think they'll screw over wall breakers, but it can drag the wall breakers over those giant bombs where I wouldn't before. Now the wall breakers will go straight towards those Tesla, and instead of going for the expo area, they'll go for the Tesla and hit the giant bomb. Now put those there. Now that's unconventional. I would never on other bases put those in their own single compartments, but it seems to make sense for this base. I think it's unique and a little bit different. Not a lot of bases have it like that. Definitely not a lot of bases I've designed, or any bases. I think one base I've had designed it like that a long time ago. But in reality, that's something new, and I like to change it up. Make the bases look a little bit new. Okay, gotta get those symmetrical. Alright, and that Dark Elixir storage, since you don't care about Dark Elixir when you're looking for trophies or looking for wins in Clan Wars, is going to actually protect that mortar really, really well. It's going to be a huge high health thing, so if they want to deploy a couple troops to take out the mortar, it's not really going to work. They're going to have to wait until they've destroyed something with several thousand health before they can get to the mortar. Now I'm just going to fill in this area with collectors. Collectors did recently get a health boost, which is pretty darn good. They got a health boost. Mm, I don't remember how much it was, but it was enough that it makes a difference. It makes enough of a difference that they're worth putting there. They're not f as strong as storage is, but they're strong enough. Now, all I have left is the outside stuff. I'm out of walls. Now, I don't have any room for those right there, so I'll place those up against that. They had their health massively reduced, but the one advantage of those army camps is their size. They push people all the way out the far end of the base. They take up almost twice as much space as any other building, so you may as well use them. You may as well use them to force people to deploy all the way at the edge. Again, this bottom side is the weak point. Hopefully, with the little compartment on the side, if they deploy directly from the side, what will happen is their wall breakers will go first for the compartment with the cannon, then for the compartment with the wizard towers, get screwed over by the wizard towers a little bit, and then they'll go for the compartment with the air defense, and then they'll go for the town hall. Now, with a jump spell, they'll easily be able to get the town hall, but if the base is decently upgraded, what will happen is they'll get stuck in the core. I have a video on that where people just get stuck in the core. They get the town hall, they get the one star, and then they can't get out of the core to get the two star. If they don't have another jump, if they use their jump to get in there, they're gonna run out of stuff as soon as they hit the outer wall of the core when they're trying to get through. I'm putting these over here to try and protect the mortar a little bit. You want to keep troops off the mortar just so they can mess up witches in the clan castle a little bit more. I don't really have much else to place besides my traps. Now, I'm not going to be placing any decorations because decorations, different people have different amounts of decorations. I am going to talk about decorations for a minute or so, though, because decorations are important. I'm going to go ahead and place this over here. I don't have anything to mirror it with. I also have that extra wall over there, so I don't really have any place to put the wall, so I'll just put it up here. Push them out just a tiny bit farther. And my last building. With my last building down, I don't know. Let's see if I can move that over. Move that over just for symmetry. And slide this. No, it leaves a gap. Anyway, I can fix the gap. Can I fix the gap? Move that down. Um, move that down. Move that over. Still got a gap. So that's not going to work. You don't want to leave a gap right next to your wall. So just deploy the wall breakers right there. And before any of your defenses can react, they'll have killed it. So I'm going to place these there to try and compensate for it. Gonna place that there so it draws troops deployed from the top over to the left. Now, if any troops are deployed directly from that side, it'll just draw them right up against the wall, which is no help to me. Gonna put these bombs outside. You want these bombs far to the outside. You want to take out dragons and balloons as soon as you possibly can. Look for the weak spots, the spots that are weak against air or spots that have exposed air defenses. That's where people are gonna deploy loons and dragons. You want to catch them as soon as they drop them. You want to get them right as soon as they drop them. Now, you can place these air bombs a little bit farther back. The air bombs, I'm just placing them up top because that's really weak because I only have two cannons guarding there and one archer tower. That's not really going to work well against a swarm of minions, so I'm going to try and take them out up there. But going to leave one here because I have no protection on this mortar. Without protection on this mortar, someone could deploy one minion and take it out. I do have that up expo there. If I were to place it down, then one minion could take it out but a couple troops can take out that one mortar right there. Also gonna supplement it with a giant bomb, a little bit close to the spring trap. I may have to move that. I'm gonna deploy these right here, just gonna drop them down, try and protect the mortar a little bit more, and anything tries and goes to that mortar, maybe the little skeletons from the witch, it's gonna get hit by those bombs. It'll kill the little skeletons, kill the little Larrys. 
So this is what I call a preliminary base. This is what I end with. I end with this type of base. This base will probably get two starred as soon as I use it, but as soon as it gets two starred, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the replay and I'm gonna see where it failed. Now I can tell you right now, when I start using this base, it is going to lose to the bottom. The bottom is going to get wrecked. The bottom is way too weak compared to the top, but I don't know how much too weak. I don't know if it's way too weak where. Is it way too weak on the direct bottom? Maybe I need to move all my traps down there. If I need to move all my traps down there, I'll do it. I do have those little spring traps down there to throw off those wall breakers, but it's not really gonna do that much. My top is really strong. It's got the luring, it's got the pathing, it's got moats, it's got high health buildings, it's got a little too much on the top. So really, I'm eventually going to be moving a bunch of the traps and maybe some of the high health buildings, maybe pair the storages down to the bottom, and that will fortify it enough to make it worthwhile. So this is what I end with. And now as far as decorations go, with decorations, what you want to do is you want to deploy the decoration, place them down where you can force the player to place their troops, specifically the clan castle. A clan castle cannot be placed on decorations. So you want to force them to place their clan castle as far out as possible so it takes a really long time, it's really hard to control. If they can deploy their clan castle right up against the walls, obviously the clan castle is going to go in through where they want. But if you force them to deploy way out by the side and your base, say they're attacking from the left, and they want their clan castle to go straight through the side with the air defense because they've broken a hole through there. Well, they want that to happen, but it's not really going to happen if they deploy it all the way out on the edge. They might get pulled up or down. So that's what you want to do with your decorations. You want to pile a bunch of them next to each other. You can put one space gaps in between them, but don't leave two space gaps in between them. That way, clan castles will be forced all the way to the outside. That's what you want to do with decorations. And this space is ready for testing. I tell you, I know how it's going to fail. I just want to see why and how much it's going to fail, what it's going to fail to, and then I can fix it. That is how you design a base. That is how you design a trophy base. You design this preliminary design, and then you figure out why it's crap on one side, and you fix that crap over the course of about a week, and then you end up with an epic base like the one I had that was winning defenses in the top 200. I literally tried for weeks and I consulted with other base designers about it for over the course of several weeks and I came up with a base that worked really well and now has become very popular. So that's how I design bases and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Tyrael, out.